So who? So whose alarm was that? <laughs> I hope you brought enough <clears throat> alarms for everybody. Um, okay, it's uh, it's half past. Uh, this is uh, the Computing Aware Traffic Steering Working Group (CATS). I'm Adrian Farrell. My co-chair uh, Pong Liu is um, in China. Uh, and uh, our working group secretary, uh, Zhang Li, is uh, also in uh, China uh, and will do his best with minutes. Uh, Dan King has uh, kindly volunteered to help with minutes, and he's also remote. So anybody who wants to leap into um, HedgeDoc uh, and help with the minutes, that's great. Otherwise, we'll sort it all out, um, possibly from the recording. Uh, OK, over to you, Pong. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's start the meeting. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to join the CAT meeting in IETF 117. And uh, here's the uh, note well. Uh, just to remind that you agree to follow IETF process and policies. You are aware that any IETF contribution is covered by patent or patent applications. Uh, you must disclose the fact or not participant in the discussion. And since we have started to adopt the WG document, please keep that in mind. And the audio, video, and the photographic records of the meeting may be made public. And personal information that you provide to ITF will be handled in accordance with the ITF privacy statement. And please show respect to others the document list below um, has more detailed information. So the conduct uh, guidelines, um, please remember to show your respect and have impersonal discussions, um, uh, diverse solutions for the global internet, and uh, uh, be pre prepared to contribute to the ongoing uh, working of the group. And we are using the MetaEcho queue control and the chat available for use via MetaEcho and Zuli. The note will be taken by Chum Li, um, but as agent side, we encourage everyone to help with that and uh, check your comments are recorded correctly. So the uh, meeting tapes um, for the in-person participants, please make sure to inside uh, Sign into the session using the meta echo uh, and uh, use it to join the mic queue. And for the remote uh, participants, um, please keep in mind to make sure your audio and video off um, until it is in your turn to speak. And here's the deliverables and uh, milestones. Uh, of course, all drafts are welcome uh, just to post them in the data tracker and discuss them on the list. But our initial focus must be on our milestones. And for the milestone, we just have done uh, to adopt the problem statement, use case, and requirement documents. And please note well, only the framework and the architecture are listed as uh, going for RFC. So here's the agenda. Uh, first, we will have a discussion of the term terminology which is important for most of our draft. And then we will have two slots for the problem statement and use cases. Um, and then have, uh, we have three uh, requirements draft and one framework and architecture draft. And we also have two slots for the compute metrics. And at the last, we have uh, environmental considerations about the green. So any comments on that? Okay, uh, let's go into the agenda. Um, first, uh, the discussion of the terminology. Matt, please. Yeah, so this is a presentation actually to um, just to seek for I'd say, some feedback from the working group to about the, I would say, the, the various terms we are using in various documents here. 
uh, this is really important for us to think in what we are, I would say, meaning by the various terms, because many of those are really uh, overloaded. So it would be really good for us, at least today, that we, uh, we can have some agreements on the uh, perimeter of these terms. Next slide, please. So why we are doing this, especially that there are many, I would say, RFCs that are already, I would say, defining the sum of the term, the services, the service instances, and so on. So we may just simply go in there here in CATS. But the reality is that things are subtle. There are many uh, specific aspects that are in, in, we are doing here in this working group and that there are work to be, I would say, code in the uh, terms that we will be using. Um, this is also important for another, I would say, effort, because many, I would say, um, there's a lot of similarities with what is currently proposed by some documents with, uh, and other efforts that are done in ATF, but also outside. So there is um, having, I would say, a clear terminology will help us position the, this work also that we are doing in CATS versus what is done in, uh, uh, elsewhere. So this will also is the, um, I would say, the collaboration and so the um, position of the various works. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is just to, the purpose here is not to go to go deeper into the various RFCs that are there, but just to give you, I would say, an overview. That's why we cannot just record what is already in the RFCs there, just to say that we um, refer to them. Uh, this is just one of, of the, I would say, all RFCs in which there is, I would say, a good definition of the service at the time, but this is really specific to a node. What we are doing here in, in CAT is not a node specific. It, it, is, it is more than that. Next slide, please. The, 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 this, the, this other, I would say, definition of the service we can find is, 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 is good. It's starting to be, I would say, existing from the node. It's will cover the network side, but still this is too network specific. Uh, and it does not cover, I would say, the, um, some specifics that we are doing here in, in CATS. Next slide, please. Yeah, so th th this one is really interesting because it, this is the first, I would say, RFC we had in DF, which is a knowledge that we have the, that the notion of the service is really overloaded. The, the definition is there is really good, but still it is network specific. So we need to, to have some flavor there to include the computing in aspects of the, of the definition on it. So that's why the next slide, um, the proposal we have for, I would say, the definition of a, um, 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 a, a generic definition of the service that can be displayed in the next slide, please. It builds on what we have in the, in, in the previous RFC. So basically, without getting into details what it, um, about, I would say, the internals of the service itself. So the proposal is that we, we say that the service is basically an offering which is made by a service provider by orchestrating various resources. We don't make any assumptions about the resources themselves. It can be computing, networking, uh, storage, name it. And then how this various resources are orchestrated, invoked, and solicited, this is something which is belong to what we call the service logic. And the service logic is owned and mastered by the provider itself. And this is something which is internal to the, to, to, to the provider, and it is not supposed to be exposed outside. And the, the, the resources that are, I would say, solicited there in order to provide that service by the service provider, they can be exposed by some monolithic functions or some monolithic uh, processes that we here in the ATF, we call that service functions. Uh, they can be hosted within the same node, multiple nodes within the same service sites, multiple sites. No assumption is there in, the, in, in this definition. And then how the various resources, they are glued together or they are chained together to provide the service. This, this magic is part of the service logic and it can be done by various tools. Service functions is, is, is one of them. Next slide, please. So if we want to scope a little bit the definition, not to, go to, to have this the, the generic one to go to something which is really, I would say, related to what we are doing here in the, in the, um, in the in CATS, this is what we call the computing service. So, so this is exactly what I have in the previous slide, just we are filtering on the type of the resources. The resources that will be solicited to provide the service are really computing uh, resources. That means that the network part will be, I would say, visible when we will, we will, we will package that, ser that, that service. And for the other items, the CATS architecture or the CATS solutions, they must accommodate all these deployments, the, 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 the deployment schemes that are provided there. With one caveat there that I would like to, to insist on it, is how these resources are changed is really something which is out of the scope of CATS. So we are not here redoing what we have done already in the ECFC. The internal logic, once you, you arrive to your service sites, is something which is 
internal to that service site and not visible outside. Next slide, please. So once we have this definition of, I would say, the, uh, the, the, service, the, the service and the computing services, which is our concern, then there is this notion of the service instances. The, so here again, we are proposing something which is really, I would say, generic so that we can try to, to have something to, to build on it. We don't need to, to have all the subtleties there, but we, um, we, uh, we propose this one. So what's a service instance uh, after all? A service instance is that the, an instance of, I would say, a set of running resources that, that are built according to a service logic that I have mentioned in the previous slides. So many of such instances can be run in, in the, I would say, on, 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 by a provider. Um, the instances that are there to the same service logic, they are providing the same service. So a same service can be provided by, by multiple, multiple service instances. And these instances can be within the, sa the same, I would say, service site. And on purpose, I am not calling this each site or core site or original site. We don't, we don't care about that. All what we care about it is that we have a service a set of resources that are running somewhere, and that somewhere we call it the, the I would say, the, uh, the, service, the service sites. And the, the, the service instances, they are important because this is the physical staff, which is, which is invoked to provide and to honor a request that is used by, 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 by a client. So the request from the clients will be processed and um, fulfilled by, by, by the service instances themselves. By the, but the client does not, is not supposed to be aware that there are various service instances in, 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 this, in, in the network. So this is not really important for the, for the, for the, for the client. When, and we are, when I'm talking about the client, I'm talking about the software which is invoked in the service itself. So what this, the, the, this piece of software is actually seeing. Next slide, please. This is what we call the service contact instance. So this is the first, I would say, which, which is the customer facing, I would say, service function that will intercept the, 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 the service request. And how this service request will be, will be processed, whether it will stay internally within the, the, the service contact instance itself or pass to another, other resources, this is something which is part of the service logic. And in CATS, we don't need to make an assumption about, about I would say, that, that, that process that's really hidden to the, to, to the clients, and this is not important for us. Um, and the, the, other, the other point here is that the same service can be accessed via multiple service contact instances themselves. They can be within the same site or they can be dispatched var among various, various sites. And even that service contact instance, when it receives the request, it may just dispatch the request again internally. And that process, that recursiveness is hidden to, to the client itself. And this is something which is part of the, I would say, the savoir-faire of the, uh, the provider itself. Next slide, please. So if you want to glue what I have mentioned about the service contact instances with the, what we are supposed to do here in CATS is that the, the steering beyond the service contact instance is not only hidden to the client itself, but also for the, for the CATS component. The CATS component should not make any assumptions what is done behind that, that, that point. And just for people who want to like to have, I would say, some architectural references, we just say that the, the, the service contact instance is it what is served by at least one egress cat forwarder. And again, I am not trying to make any assumptions about the architecture. This is something we will be later, but this is just to provide an example of how we can implement stuff. Next slide, please. So this is, this is something which is, this is not rocket science. This is just trivial to say that, yeah, the same cats for order can service, I would say, multiple service contact instances. We can have one-to-one, -one, we can have multiple, I would say, uh, for orders that will access to the same service instance for diversity, uh, reliability, and so on. Um, but this is just to provide you some, I would say, some deployment chain. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so this, 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 this is because we are using computer aware in the, in our, in the name of the working group and also in the, in the charter. So this is just to, to, to provide something which is really simple without going to a further. So when we are talking about computer aware blah, that means that that, that's, that's, that scheme we are talking about, it will take into account the computing, I would say, um, capabilities and the state to, 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 as, as an input to, 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 um, to, to, to enforce the process. And that blood process can be the forwarding, can be steering, can be computing, and, and name it. Next slide, please. So when it comes to CATS, and we are, we are talking about the steering CATS, 
is basically this is what I'm trying to uh, to have. I would say the the global problem we are trying to solve in one in one sentence is about selecting the appropriate service contact instance to I would say to 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 process a given service request according to a set of both network metrics but also computing metrics, and this that selection it does not reveal the actual service instance which is pro which is which is which is processing that request because again this will be hidden by the service contact itself itself that will receive that, that request and the metrics that will feed that, that process of storing the i would say the, the packet they are aggregated we won't be advertising the metrics for every resources which is invoked in, in as part of the service instance itself so we will have something which some aggregation somewhere there. So this is to be defined and also characterized in the various architecture and solution we are we are doing. But this is something which is really key here because otherwise we will have some implications in the scalability and also dynamicity of the solution we are we are providing. Next slide, please. Yeah, so, so this is just to provide an example of a realization, a realization of all what we imagined so far. You can have multiple, multiple clients. They are, I would say. Uh, sending service requests via what we call the the, uh, the cats overlay, the forwarders that are in the borders again they are just provided as as example. I am not sure that we need all these components. This is something which is open for in the in the architecture and uh, and they would like to insist on this. Um, and so and and then there are the requests will be I would say forwarded to the various service sites. Again, there is no assumption about the distribution of the type of the services themselves and whether the same service is replicated in all the service uh, sites of a given provider. So this is this is really up to the uh, to, to, to the provider to decide where the it will it will instantiate the, the service itself. What will be visible there is that that component which is important for us, the first entry point, the client facing service function, which is the service contact and instance itself. Uh, just one mention is that the, the links that are shown in between the uh, the egress cats forwarder and the service side they are not direct to the service contact itself. This is just a way of presenting stuff to simplify it. But those instances can be deeper in the service in the service side itself. Next slide, please. Yeah. So 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 as a summary, so the, the, these are the key po the, the key terms that we think that are um, important to, to to drive the work and also to scope what we are I would say will be doing here in the um, in the in the in the working group. The the, the plan we uh, we are suggest proposing to the working group is that um, once we agree on the um, on the perimeter on on these various terms, um, we will record them in the, uh, in the in the framework. This is our proposal, and then. These various terms can be referred to by the other, I would say, document we have in the, um, in, 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 the, in the working group. So just one mention is that this is, this is a proposal for discussion. Tanks are not frozen and proposals are really welcome to, 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 to enhance this. So thank you, Med, for, um, for taking up the challenge to, to put this together and, and float it. And I suspect there will be quite a bit of discussion uh, Joel is first. Joel Halpern with Ericsson. Thank you, Med. This is a really good document. I have one nit. Yeah. It's, it's really a nit. Early on, one of your definitions, you refer to monolithic. And I find every time I look at that, I have no way to know what that means. And it actually doesn't add anything to the definition. So my suggestion specifically is simply to remove that word from that definition. That's fine. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Joel. Thanks. Uh, Chong Li. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, Chong Li from Huawei. I, I think this is a good start, right? So uh, after reading the uh, slide, I think the, uh, the def definition of service and, and, and service instance is quite are quite clear to me, but the service contact uh, instance is not so clear to me because, for example, could could we have a, a, a use case like that? We only have the service contact instance, which is the service instance itself, something like this. Yeah, I'm not really yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Actually, actually, yeah. yeah, actually, this is covered by definition. You can have, there is no assumption whether the um, 
um, the service request will terminate in that point it, or we, it will be, um, I would say, handed to, to, to some other resources. An example that I can just provide you in the verse of IP, we have there what we call the uh, service border controllers, the PCCF, if you want. That's the, the only point which is visible to your ca customers. Then the request we, which we need sent from that, I would say, the, 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 the SBC, for example, in the, when you are placing a service a voice over IP call, is, is, is not shown to you. It is back to, I would say, more nodes in, in the core network. So that contact point is, is really the, I would say, the, what, what you will receive as a, the, the IP address or the locator of your, where your request will be, will be forwarded to. Um, but then there is no, it's not because the, your request will terminate that node that the request will stay there. There, there is some recursive, recursiveness that will, that, will, that will happen depending on, I would say, on the service logic we are, we are, we are talking about. Okay, I will leave the time to others and, and, and let's discuss this offline. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, uh, Daniel. Daniel Huang, ZTE. From the definition of service contact in, uh, instance, it seems uh, it should be under the maintenance, management, and scheduling under the CAS network. But uh, in reality, um, uh, such as an L, uh, load balance in the, the, in the DC, uh, it, it, it actually is not the case. It's, uh, it's not under the control and the scheduling of um, uh, the routing network at the main. Uh, so um, that's my first concern about um, the service contact instance. And the second concern is about service uh, service definition. Uh, the definition is clear for me. Uh, I, uh, I'm wondering if it's, there's, there's supposed to be a um, um, unified and standard definition about service logic and, 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 and interface because it's just possible um, uh, as possibilities, there's, um, uh, the service could be provided, uh, the same service could be provided by, by multiple operators. Thank you. Yeah, j just one, one, one clarification question. The first um, comment you made, I, I'm not sure to get the, um, actually the concern you have with the, um, with the service conduct instance itself. Uh, are you saying that the load balance staff should be part of the CATS yes. perimeter? Yes. The service load balancing itself? Or just the way we will steer the request into that 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 load ba uh, service balancer. I mean, I mean the service contact instance, uh, such as uh, such as the load balancer LB, actually is, is not under the um, uh, it's not always in uh, loading loading domain in the existing network. It's 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 within the domain of um, a DC network. So, but from the end to end. Um, uh, computing world traffic steering um, actually is, you know, I, I suppose the service contact instance should be uh, in the, within the same, same same domain. Okay, thank you. Jim, uh, everybody now has got maximum two minutes each. Go ahead, Jim. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I thought you said Ken. I'm like, Ken? Who's Ken? Um, so, uh, Jim Gisha from Futureway, uh, speaking without any hats on. Um, really nice work, Med. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, there were a couple of things that sprung to mind that I'd like you to consider. One was I didn't see any kind of discussion about naming of services. Um, I don't know if that's something that uh, I, I know we struggle with that in mm -hmm. SFC and it, it seems to me that that would be kind of nice to, you know, it, it, it's great having all these service instances, but you need to be able to kind of associate them with some kind of name. And I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. We, you don't need to answer now. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing was um, it would be nice to see in the framework how this fits together with other aspects of you know the overall um service ecosystem so for example you know the consumers of this information i know we're not chartered to do that but um you know in the in the framework like for example alto how does alto fit into this mm -hmm. and um you know how does a consumer actually instantiate what cats is providing um so a little bit of work around yeah. that would be really useful um if, if you can yeah Th thank you jim 
This is not present, for example, the, the service name is not presented here because this is a little bit deviating to the uh, um, framework stuff. Uh, and they tried really to not include the um, architectural um, bias because I, I would like to, so that to, to, to be open. But yeah, this is something which is interesting to cover in the, in, in the framework itself. Uh, Renan, as quickly as you can, please. Hi, this is Renan from InterDigital. Uh, thanks for the really nice work. Um, so I had a minor question regarding slide number six. Uh, so the question really is, are we talking of a set of resources or an abstraction of a set of resources? At, at the level of the service itself, is, is, is really, it doesn't matter the, I would say, the physical institution of the resources themselves. What is important is, for, is, is I would say, the characterization of, this, um, of the resources, so it can be abstract. But when it comes to the service instance itself, then the, re, the physical resources need to be, I would say, involved and in, uh, included in the, uh, in the discussion. Okay, so my minor suggestion in the first bullet is, uh, to replace offering. So instead of saying an offering, you could perhaps say uh, an abstraction that is made available, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, last up, Richard. Uh, Matt, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, so sure. OK, so very quick question. Because we're talking about services, and for someone who is following all these services, uh, of course, in the computing field, you would immediately think about, for example, Kubernetes. Therefore, in Kubernetes, oftentimes, they don't have a concept of uh, contacting services, just everything just service. Or over there, in particular, they introduce some kind of atom, which is called a pod. And therefore, they specify every pod must be located at a single host. That will simplify a lot of concepts. So therefore, have you, uh, and here, of course, I think somehow to solve the issue, you get the concept of contacting services and so on. And do you always have contacting services and so on? So why don't you, for example, I mean, one, one possibility is uh, take the stance of, for example, like a Kubernetes abstraction and let you see, okay, and the instance is somehow required to be at a given location, just like a pod. Okay. And then you build on top. Wouldn't that be a little bit even simpler architecture and terminology? And also a little bit more aligned into, you know, like a Kubernetes structure. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richard. That's, um, that's a good comment to consider. Brilliant. Thank you. So there's, there's obviously some more discussion to have on the list with this to, to get the precise words that we would put in the framework document. But I think we've got a good start. Thank you, Med. All right, Kihan, there you are. Let me give you control of the slides. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Um, hi, all. I'm Kihan from China Mobile. I'll briefly introduce uh, the first uh, working group draft, um, CAS problem statement and use cases and requirements. And uh, uh, I'm, in my part, I will uh, briefly introduce the problem statement and use cases, and uh, I will leave the requirement part to uh, Luis from uh, Telefonica. So next slide. Um, this is uh, the draft status. So based on uh, lots of discussion in the mailing list, we have uh, modified the table contents of this, uh, this draft. So uh, we had uh, a, a, a successfully added a new use cases, computing over SD1. And also we uh, add the uh, requirements, the whole requirement part, into this to merge inside into into a whole a new draft. Um, so, uh, to people not so familiar with the background, I'll first uh, briefly introduce the the, uh, the motivation of cats. So, um, basically, uh, the use of demand has driven the the fast de development of convert and compute and network infrastructure. So, like low latency, high reliability, and more sta uh, stable uh, services. Uh, experience. So, uh, in these, um, so to meet this diverse uh, user demands, we need to consider how to um, deploy uh, service instances and network edge. So, there might be two major problems we need to solve in the environment of cats. The first one is the service instance deployment selections. So, 
and also the second one is the traffic steering problems. So uh, t- uh, basically, when uh, the network is congested in the cases, so um, when we want to tra- uh, steer the traffic to uh, some sp- some uh, specific service instance, the closest uh, service might not be the best. So that's the basic uh, problem we want to solve in, in the uh, uh, in, in, in the environment of cats. So in this document, uh, we also uh, modify the, uh, the, some key definitions, uh, just like the, uh, what Matt just presented. Uh, so we have uh, modified the major uh, definition of service and also the service instance. So these definitions uh, might, be, might not be perfect and uh, might be uh, temporary. Uh, but uh, they have give some, given some uh, key features uh, in, the context, in the context of cats. And uh, in, in the next uh, version, we will better coordinate uh, with other definitions, uh, with the definitions from other drafts like the, the architecture draft. So uh, next slide. Uh, so as for the problem statement, just like I said, uh, we have two major problems in, uh, in cats. The first one is the service selection, uh, service selection in the network edge. So uh, basically, we need to deploy multiple uh, service instances at uh, geographically distributed network edges. So factors uh, here need to be considered uh, is uh, the status of network and computing topology and the locations of users in these uh, service instances. And also, we need to consider about the capacity of these uh, of the service instances and network edge. And also, even we need to consider about the service category. So, as for the, another uh, problems, we need, uh, about the traffic steering. Uh, so here, the problems is the closest uh, net, uh, site a service instance we select might not be the best. So, uh, this is because the closest may not have enough resources and the load is always uh, dynamically changing. And also the closest site uh, might not have uh, the related resource that we, the user, the client uh, wants most because some uh, considering, considering about some uh, complex uh, processing, we uh, sometimes we need to consider about the heterogeneous uh, hardware in some sites. Uh, and also we need to consider about the network path uh, because uh, there might be some congested uh, link. So uh, these, the, these three uh, major um, points, uh, they need to be coordinated uh, to be when we uh, talk about the problem of traffic steering. And uh, this, these two problems are, uh, are what we need to solve in the uh, CAS uh, uh, in, in cats. Mm. So uh, basically, we have some uh, 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 high-level uh, use cases in the previous uh, uh, previous draft. Uh, the first one is computing aware uh, AR augmented reality and the virtual reality. The second one is computing aware, uh, like a um, uh, you know, connected vehicles, and another one, the company where digital twin. So in these three uh, use cases, they bo- uh, the network uh, uh, run try, uh, uh, the network delay, uh, and uh, computing the processing uh, processing delay will contribute uh, almost equally. So uh, when we when we dynamically steer the traffic to the uh, network edge, we need to. Uh, consider both network and uh, the contribution of the network and the uh, computing uh, processing delays. So uh, in the uh, latest version, we also added uh, a new uh, use case, the computing aware SD1, uh, and use case that uh, might work more uh, related to a, a specific solution. So in this uh, uh, use case, uh, when we when client uh, use SD1 to uh, access their different uh, their en- enterprise network located in different uh, locations, we, we, the computing aware problems need also be uh, thought about because uh, when we when the um, 
want to select the best virtual CPEs, they need to uh, think about the, the computing resources. So this, uh, we, we think this one is also a good use case for, uh, for the illustra illustration of what CAS can be uh, applied. So uh, based on all these uh, modification and the discussion, we have uh, uh, received uh, some valuable comments from the list and uh, uh, during the, the adoption call. So like uh, we need to have uh, mm, some uh, better uh, description and uh, clarification on the problem statement use cases. And also we, uh, instead of the definition on service, uh, 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 apart from the definition on service and uh, service instance, we also need a clear definition on edge computing and also, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the use cases, uh, some of the existing use cases might be appear to be very high level. They should be uh, more specific. And also, uh, in terms of newly added use case, in the SD one use case, uh, there might be some simpler ways to solve the problems. And also, uh, apart from the the computing uh, resource. Uh, also, the, the policies should also be considered in SD1 use case. So, uh, thanks for all the comments, and we we co-authors, and uh, we will have a um, better discussion. And uh, we hope to address these comments in the next version. So, for the next steps, like I said, I will uh, we will address these uh, valuable comments in the next version. Also, we will consider about the relationship with other newly added use cases drop in the working group. And uh, so um, just welcome more discussions and contributions. Thank you all. Thanks, uh, Kihan, and um, thanks for the work to get us this far. I want to remind the working group that now that we've adopted this document, uh, the working group owns it, and the work actually starts now. Um, the use cases we're not aiming for a complete set of every possible use case. We're looking for a set of use cases that will help drive the requirements. Uh, Arashmid, you're, you're up. Hello, Arashmid, I'm from uh, Huawei Canada. Thanks for the work. It's, uh, uh, it's a well done uh, draft. I was wondering if uh, we can have another, uh, or have you thought about uh, services that, uh, uh, that have uh, contradicting requirements, for example, and your virtual reality probably is going to be one of those guys that have uh, your, your compute uh, and, uh, and, and delay might actually have a different uh, path to actually take. So would that be part of your um, uh, problem definition? Or is this something that you're going to consider? To be clear here, you mean a service which has two requirements that contradict That's each right. other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so, sorry, Agent. I think we will yeah, consider about the, uh, Thanks, Agent. I think uh, these problems, I think we will consider about in the next version to make the definition about this, like service and servicing to be more clear. Thank you. Brilliant. So um, we'll move on and uh, and hear about another possible use case. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Chingan from Alibaba Group. And uh, besides our last uh, use case presentation here, I want to add some spicy here to talk about a new use case from our like AI model providers per perspective, the use case of computing aware AI large models to see whether it can fit our working group scope. Yeah, please. Yes, I would like to share some basic concepts here. Uh, this year we talk a lot about these AI large models. It's mainly about, uh, first is uh, AI foundation model, which is kind of to take care of the generic uh, AI attacks and uh, domains. So it, uh, we can consider it has a wider applicable and the flexibility, and, uh, but may perform not so well for customized domains in specific 
uh, domain tasks. And uh, normally it involves like very mega scale parameters. And also we have many cust uh, customized models for specific domains like the electronics, uh, like the electricity and some power uh, consumption domain. And uh, it's so the, it is trained for the specific industries. And uh, also it's uh, more focused on solving the specific problems and uh, normally it involves some large or just middle scale parameters. Yes. Uh, here is another concept is the AI model training and uh, inference. So in, in short words, the training would uh, involve large data input and more computing. So normally it runs on top of the cloud. And uh, for current it may be not so likely to be to deployed in the in the terminal or in uh, in the in the terminal device. And for inference, since it's just uh, involves small data data input and uh, the computation and, and the the resource consumption is kind of not so high. So in many cases, it can be deployed in. Uh, like in cloud or in edge or in the device, it is they are both very possible. And uh, but here for the inference, it focuses more on the balance between the computing resource latency and the power cost. Yeah, please. So for the AI tasks here, currently in the industry, we have many kinds of uh, tasks. Uh, spec uh, re uh, here regarding the inference, we can see there are some tests, some test to tests or test classification and some vision task uh, task and also the audio and also the multi-model AI task. So here I want to say, especially for the uh, image, for the audio and for the video and these kinds of things were involved the consumption of uh, like the computing resource and the network resource if we want to provide some better user experience. So this is something I think we kind of re related to our current group and next. So here I would like to in briefly introduce some uh, several basic, uh, several possible uh, de uh, net deployment of this uh, AI, the, this AI tax first, it is all in cloud. So ba ba basically everything the foundation model and the customized model and also the training and inference would be deployed in the cloud. So uh, this may, may uh, create some problem for like the latency and also some high cost uh, to ensure the privacy protection in the cloud-based in inference. Uh, next slide. And uh, the second is the cloud device code inference. So it can provide better performance in the latency but uh, it may support only limited AI tasks since uh, we can only support, only use the compressed or pruned model in the, in the device side. Yes. And uh, also there is the cloud edge uh, co-inference uh, deployment. So in this case, the customized model can be deployed in the edge to handle, to take care of the training and the inference and provide some this service. Since uh, in this case, it can, this uh, uh, customized models can be very close to the, to the user side. So, to, so it can bring, bring some uh, advantage in the latency, but here uh, when handling AI inference tasks, if the traffic load between the device and the edge is high or this computing resource in the edge is not, is overloaded. So in this case, the traffic, a steering is needed to ensure the QoS. And, yes. and uh, the last is kind of maybe the most complex deployment. So in this case, the cloud edge and device, they all kind of, uh, they were deployed some, uh, some uh, sort of the model here. So here the main, uh, main point is there would be some uh, careful consideration to use to ensure that edge will only be used when the trade-offs are right. So also here, uh, similarly, the traffic steering is also needed here. Yes, please. So in summary, why uh, the traffic steering is needed? Because uh, as I said, the, uh, the vision audio model 
multimodal AI tester, they all involve uh, many consumption on the network resource and computing resource. So, and it is also kind of common that same customized model is deployed in multiple edge to achieve the load balance and high re reliability. So in this case, the computing resource and network info should be collectively considered to make sure the suitable traffic steering uh, decision can be made. So here maybe some discussion for our uh, maybe the next step, like uh, based besides the existing defined requirements and use case. So um, is there a need for the device side application to know and choose whether the inference is taking place or how the network and computing resource be used optimally, you know, just to let the device side declare the AI task constraints and uh, let the edge to figure out. This is just some uh, questions in my mind. So hopefully to discuss here. Yes, that's uh, all kind of things I want to present today. Okay, thank you. Mm. I don't see anyone in the queue, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to do a show of hands poll because this is fun. Uh, my question is going to be whether anyone objects to adding uh, AI to the use cases. Which would help if I could type. You don't actually see me what I'm typing here, which is really weird. This is whizzing along quite fast. And I see basically three people say, four people saying they object to the idea of raising, of adding AI to the use cases. Do any of those people want to express what their objection is? Uh, they can do it on a mailing list and we can move on. But um... Tony Lee, I see you in the queue. <laughs> I also see Rick Taylor in the queue. This may well be exciting attempts to vote. Oh, no, that's Rick. Hi. No, it's, it's kind of while people are still voting, I have a slightly broader question. I have no objection to the, to, the, to the inclusion of AI, and I'm happy to say publicly that I did not raise my hand. I have a question about the use cases in general, because some of the descriptions of use cases that you describe here are about understanding the nature of the network so that you can place the various components that make up your AI workload correctly. Some of the problem statements and the use cases you describe are about, given I have AI workloads, I need to steer traffic because I have already placed it somewhere and I now need to influence the network. One I consider to be reactive, i.e. reacting to the state of the network in some way, and influencing the placement, and the other to be proactive, I, I have placed, and now I must change the network. I'm new to CATS, I apologize if this is a known problem. What is the use case that CATS is trying to solve here? Is it the proactive or the reactive, or both? I'm glad you asked that question. Oh. <laughs> um, I think my answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure that's helpful. I know that's a so. So I, I mean, I think we're at the point of trying to understand what our use cases are and what problem we're trying to solve. That that's how early we are as a working group. So I, from my perspective, I would kindly suggest that work on network metrics, work on steering and influencing the network. Most definitely, an IETF problem. Placement algorithms for services, as we are starting to describe them. I wouldn't consider it to be an IETF problem. That's go take it to, to the Kubernetes guys or, or, or whatever. That's a, that's a more general problem than networking. And IETF working groups work well when they focus on a, on a known problem and solve it. So. Yeah, so we are at the traffic steering, yeah. not the um, 
not the, not, not the, the venue choice. Yeah. Thank you. Gotcha. Uh, Chen Ji. Um, on the same uh, thread with uh, the name here, yeah, it seems like, uh, well, I'm not against uh, to put this one, but the only thing I try to give a general com uh, comments is like uh, here, just like uh, you have some uh, tasks that need uh, high profile uh, computational capabilities. So it's not just like AI. So what my, my point is here is like, uh, this is a general, so basically not just the AI. It's, it's all for the cast, it should focus on the compute. That, it's going to integrate with the network itself. Not like, uh, you know, we can get AI, we can get IoT, we get another things, all kind of use cases to put into it. Yeah, so I agree with that gentleman. Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, from the network layer perspective for the, uh, not only, I agree with you, not for only the AI tasks, but also some, they, from the network perspective, it's just uh, a bunch of data. So yes, but, uh, I think uh, for the, AI testing, it involves some maybe some like different uh, scales. Maybe the, the data scales kind of has its unique feature, maybe much larger, maybe the, 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 the streaming or the flow is kind of longer since we have so many kinds of AI tasks here. So I think in this case, we could see if we can find, we find some new features about this kind of data set, we can add something in the network, uh, in the network layer. Or maybe very fortunately we found the current solution can fit where in this AI data sets, then yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, we, we don't need to do anything here. Okay, thanks. Uh, Julien and uh, Rashmi, you, you joined the queue after I closed it. So sorry, that's gonna have to go to the mailing list and we'll move on. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Luis from Telefonica. I will cover the second part of the document that was mentioned by Keham before, which is the recently adopted document on use cases and requirements. So next please. So CATS is, is about the process of selecting the service instance based on, essentially on observed metrics at, for both computing and networking. From, from that, let's say, problem statement, as well from the use cases that were documented in, in, in the draft, we have derived a, a number of, uh, of requirements that somehow are classified in the blocks that you can see here in the slide. So I, I will go now through each of these blocks, trying to comment about the rationale of, of the, the set of requirements being identified so far. And yeah, introducing very briefly the, the requirements as well. So next, please. So the first block is about the dynamic and effective selection among multiple services instances. So the rationale here is that we will have different server, uh, service instances placed in different points in the network. So we need to have the mechanisms for having the, the proper selection of each of them. So here we identify two, two requirements by now. So the CATS must provide discovery and resolving of the mapping the service, uh, from the service identifier to an specific address in order to be able to steer the traffic. And also CAS must provide uh, mapping methods for quickly selecting the instance, okay? The following block is about the agreement on metric representation. The rationale here is that the, 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 the objective, the idea is to agree in a common way of representing the metrics that could be of relevance for selecting the service instance uh, in order to steer the traffic towards that, that selected instance. Here, the requirements identified so far is that well, CAS must agree on, for sure, on, on, on the metrics to be used regarding the compute, but also as the, the last requirement, requirement number four, the network metrics as well. So at the end, the, the idea, the objective is to combine both uh, compute and, and networking metrics in such a way to, of providing the proper selection, uh, considering the status of both uh, domains. Next, please. Uh, I think one before. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So the next block is about the moderated metric distribution. Here, the rationale for this set of requirements is to, to find a scalable way of disseminating, advertising the metrics, so not, not uh, creating problems in, in, in the network because of the distribution of those metrics. So the, the requirements identified here so far is that CAT must provide the mechanisms for distributing the metrics in, in a scalable way. And CAS must realize this with some rate control uh, yeah, in order to not flood in the, the network uh, with the advertisement of these kind of, of metrics. 
The following block is about the flexible usage of these metrics. So the rationale here is to use the combined network and, and compute metrics. Here the requirement is that uh, well, a compute semantic model should be defined for the mapping selection. That ma uh, cats must uh, have flexibility in, in, the, in the way of uh, using the metrics and uh, the definition and utilization of these metrics. Cats as well uh, must set up uh, metric information that uh, can be understood by all the CANS components so that somehow they could proce uh, process similar in a similar way the, all the metrics being defined. And that CANS must use uh, network and compute metrics um, and in, in case that some of the nodes are not able to understand those metrics to define default actions in such a way that we, we can continue, I mean, we could have service continuity, no, not service disruption. Next, please. The following block is about the session and, and service continuity. Here, the, the, the point of the rationale of this set of, of requirements is to do, have the possibility of changing the service instance without uh, in, impacting the, ser the service continuity, the session continuity. So here, re as requirements, we have that the, the session uh, and, uh, as well as the service should be uh, maintained in, in CADS. That CADS must maintain instance affinity. So once we deliver the traffic to one instance, we can keep continuing delivering the traffic to the same instance along the lifetime of the service, of the, of the flow, I mean. The next requirement is that CADS must avoid keeping fine runtime uh, state granularity in network nodes. The penultimate one that CADS must provide mechanisms to minimize client side state. And the final one that CADS should support the uh, UE and service instance mobility. Next, please. So the last blocks are uh, these two. So the regarding preserving communication conf uh, confidentiality, the rationale here is to avoid any leakage of computing domain or application privacy in, in CAD solution. So CAD must preserve the confidentiality of the communication related to between the user and in relationship between the user and, and the service. And regarding the final security consideration, so the, the objective here would be to have a secure design uh, from, uh, for, for, for CAD, let's say. So CAD, uh, the, the service data and CAD must be protected. The nature of the user's activity should be hidden. And uh, the, there should be or is it required to, to have secure advertisement of the, of the information in such a way that we can prevent rogue nodes to uh, participate in, in the network. So next one, please. These were the, the requirements that were described in, in the document. The document, as said, has been recently adopted. So in, in the process of adoption and in the mailing list, we received a number of outstanding uh, comments that I will go very quickly through them. So, so, for instance, we received comments about that some of the requirements are prescriptive, like the, the, the fact of mapping of a service identifier to a specific address, or the requirement of low latency, and so on and so forth. Another outstanding comment is that there are some bug expressions in, in the requirements, so uh, like the, the reference to quickly, that is somehow ambiguous, um, and the idea of metrics flexibility. Then uh, the fact that the metric collection is also important. Probably we need to uh, identify some of the requirements in, in respect to the metric collection. Um, also, the discussions about the session and service continuity probably should be clarified and, and providing more details. And also the fact that the use cases probably are very too high. Maybe we need to do a, a preliminary exercises or refining the description of the use cases and from that fa uh, fact uh, deriving more, um, let's say, clear uh, requirements. And the same story for the security. So next, please. And the last one. So the next step is for sure address the valuable comments received. Um, note, uh, as also said by Adrian, that the document has been already adopted. So the, the, the working group is now the owner of the document. So the, 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 or we encourage, let's say the editors, we encourage the, the working group to provide comments and, and in such a way that we can reflect in the document the proper direction and the working group is, is feeling is necessary uh, for the requirements perspective. So yeah, we will make, welcome the discussion and comments for sure. So that, that's all. Thank you. Brilliant, thanks. If uh, there are four people in the queue, if they could uh, be quick. Uh, Rick Taylor, first off, thank you. Great requirements document. I think it's, I'm a big fan of requirements document. It scopes what's gonna happen. My question is, I can see a lot of those requirements being met by work in other working groups that already exists. That doesn't mean having the requirement is bad but it's not an enticement to go and invent a new form of DNS specifically for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for, for nods from the chairs to say that's not the intention here. Yeah, read the charter. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Carlos. Carlos Bernardo, Swiss Ethereum. Just a, a minor comment. I, I see a lot of value in this document, but uh, the, when I, I read it, I think that some of the requirements are a bit back, back in the sense that it's not clear to me the requirements of, of the solution or of the working for the working group. There are some that they are written in a way that is more a requirement for the working group than a requirement for the whatever solution the working group comes up with. So mm. I think that should be slightly rewritten a bit. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. Yeah. Yeah. Laura Schmidt. Hi, uh, one comment and one question. The first question is that when we talk about metrics uh, or schedules, part of the metrics as well. So, or, or simply you're just measurements that you're sending around. So for example, if a particular service is online for, for a particular number of uh, cycles, and then it goes down uh, after those number of cycles, are we going to actually distribute this as a metric around as well or not? The, uh, the comment uh, that I have is uh, regarding the previous uh, presentation in AI, which brings up actually a requirement, which some AI uh, uh, features, for example, like federated learning, require the point to multi-point and multi-point to point type of uh, requirements in terms of steering, traffic steering in, in, uh, in, in, this, in this forum. So you might want to as well capture that problem. Regarding your comment, thank you. Probably something, I mean, if we also incorporate the use case, something that we need to, to take into the requirements because of the nature of the use case. Regarding your question, my, my first reaction is, uh, I mean, if, if, if there is uh, a service instance that is appearing or disappearing, so essentially will not be part more of, or there would not be, and there would not be way of steering traffic to something that is not already there. So there would not be a applic metric applicable for that, I guess. So this is my first reaction. Dirk. Uh, hi, uh, Dirk Trossen, uh, Huawei, one of the co-authors. I think one of the exercises, apart from the comments made before, which I largely agree with, is to really scrape the um, requirements on the um, requirements level. I see rather interesting um, requirements like we must use network metrics. I find that um, interesting considering this is a computer awareness working group. If I have a service that has no access or doesn't desire any access or has no way to obtain access to the network metrics, how do I fulfill the requirement? Um, so thinking about maybe short levels there would be you know, quite interesting. Um, the same goes with, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of, there was a question by Marco Liebsch on Affinity. I'm a big fan of that discussion. Um, but there is a must requirement to avoid state in the network. Um, that is interesting. I'm a proponent of that requirement. But people should think about the consequences of it. Because it actually will kick out a number of things we've seen in the discussion at the moment. If I can't keep network state, there's only... And there is only another point where I can keep state, and that is at the endpoints. So people should think about the requirements. It would be useful to get the input, obviously, from the working group on that as well now, increasingly on those various levels of requirements. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. OK, excellent. Um, moving on, uh, Dong Yu, I will give you okay. control of the slides. <laughs> Okay, good morning, respectful experts. On behalf of my colleagues, I would like to share our related works and perceptions on the problem statements and incremental requirements of the current discussed end-to-end CATS. Next slide. You should have control. If it's not working, I will do it. There we are. Okay, thanks, Adrian. And here's the jobs I present and some related works are also listed. And next slide, please. As forecast, typical use cases and problems are discussed. And here I may sim maybe simply classify the problems into two successive phases, computing aware and traffic steering. The former is attributed to the massive, dynamic, complex, and obscure interest of service instances due to the features of computing status and the characteristics of edge computing. While well, the latter problem is naturally derived, which is how to achieve joint traffic steering and of computing and networking. Next slide. For the first two subproblems of computing aware, Computing status is described in multiple dimensions with both identical and different properties compared to the network. 
and those different attributes lack interpretable semantics of the network. We believe that computing information description, modeling, and corresponding awareness schemes are indispensable works to solve the mentioned subproblems. And here are some related works listed, and we'd like to propose our suggestions that computing status should be converted or mapped into matrix aligning with existing network matrix schemes in an understandable manner. And joint traffic steering should be implemented over the underlying infrastructure with both network and converted compute matrix. Next slide. And for the next two problems, the quality of service instances could be massive in the future and your fine granularity computing status information could be dynamic. Considering the above issues, a cohesive manner is introduced here to generate aggregated coarse grained and relatively stable per site information in following draft display. And apparently, it shapes and indicates a hierarchical awareness and routing scheme. And Egress here is selected first and egress cat routers are left to make a second choice. Next slide. With a hierarchical scheme introduced here, it brings significant values and advantages. With meta information aggregated, the entries collected, stored, and maintained in the control plane is reduced. A cat router only records the information of local instances and the representative entries for the other cat routers instead of all instances. Additionally, since the entries aggregated, the frequency of entry updates is declined and the behavior of service route recalculation is done. But despite the values of hierarchical routing, we may wonder the consequent cost and incremental requirements and considerations. That is, how to aggregate? Is there potential risks of invisible detailed information? And it seems exists a micro problem within a case of multi point decision making. Next slide. Consideration one here is that how to ensure the correctness of an aggregation algorithm. As shown below, instances located at respectable cat routers. Suppose a computing related service is sensitive to um, maybe memory attribute and we temporarily ignore other constraints. Cat routers learn and record the entries displayed and here a summation scheme is deployed evidently. Suppose a service request comes from PE3 and stage to PE1 for a 660 value, and similar decision procedures are made at PE1 and PE2. Then the request is stayed between them continuously, which generates a permanent loop. That is, inappropriate aggregation algorithms lead to inconsistent decisions. And the fundamental reason here is the summation leads to the disappearance of comparability between aggregated information and detailed information. And a summation value is always preferred. Therefore, we propose that aggregated information should be comparable to the information of any explicit single instance. Next slide. An aggregated value undoubtedly shields detailed information, and thus we may question the cost attributed to the invisibility of detailed matrix. It is a quite complex problem, taking scheme one here as an example. A service requires end-to-end -end delays no more than 50, and it is memory sensitive. A best value for each attribute type is selected as the aggregated value. Thus, 420 represents the performance at P1, while 260 and 30 represents PE2. PE1 seems to be the better selection. However, instance 3 at PE1 fails to satisfy the delay requirements. Instance 6 at PE2 is actually the best. Also, with future considerations, number of service instances may be large and the running status is also displayed in a continuous manner. Thus, it is difficult to distinguish and it also may not be necessary to select the best one. 
And here is just an aggregation algorithm should accommodate multiple scenarios and service requirements. Next slide. Also, as display, suppose instance one, instance two located SP one loses efficacy at a sudden. This event has not yet been notified to PE2 at a timely manner, and PE2 still steers the traffic to PE1, which is still reckoned as a best selection. However, at PE1, whenever it updates its FIB, PE2 is the most appropriate choice. Thus, the traffic is steered back to PE2, which forms a microloop here. Compared with microloop occurred in IGP, the microloop mentioned here as similarities distributed status storage and disorderly convergence lead inconsistent decision making among distributed devices. And over the underlying network, it is considered as maybe the overlay microloop problem. Thus, we suggest that routing and forwarding information address should be organized in a hierarchical manner and forwarding behaviors at a PE should correlate with the hierarchical forwarding behavior information basis, respectively. Next slide. And as a conclusion, we here present several incremental requirements for CATS. And for our next steps, we are looking forward to any suggestions to refine our drafts and works. And thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. So, so this slide set started off sort of uh, requirements, wandered into architecture, disappeared into solutions, and then came back rather nicely to requirements. And I hope that uh, we all understand that we're at the requirements and architecture stage here uh, as, as a working group. Dirk, have you got a, a quick point? Yes, uh, thanks. Um, I'm, in part, I'm confused a little bit by, by, by this document. Um, but I do understand, and we have to really maybe understand better which of these aspects are really within the scope of work and which ones are interesting. They're an interesting problem, but they're not within the scope of CATS. And this goes back to the comments before around monolithic versus uh, 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 you know, composition of services. Um, they, they, there seem to be aspects in the discussion where the problem of actually finding out which instance, and I'm using now Med's terminology, behind a service contact point is actually being selected. That's an interesting problem. It's difficult. I'm, 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 I'm totally agreeing with that. But it's not really with, uh, and I, it seems that we agreed that this is not in scope of CATS, and we should make that explicit. So I think we have to divide those problems off but are really about the complexity of what happens when you do things across service contact points and, and behind service contact points uh, and focus on those that are within scope. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks. okay, thanks. So in the uh, interests of time, uh, we're gonna keep scooting onwards. Um, and nothing happened. That's interesting. You can see the slides. Oh, now I can as well. Good. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, Daniel Huang Ziti, uh, on behalf of Authorist, I will present uh, the um, problem statements and requirements of layer two uh, computing world uh, traffic steering. Next slide, please. Um, first, I'd like to um, make a simple introduction of the use case of layer two uh, virtual CPE traffic steering. Um, uh, in this system, I, I have to clarify it's quite it's, it's a little different from um, the use case is a Kahan uh, described in his presentation um, because uh, right here um, the um, you know um, there is uh, more and more industry practices to particularly in the operators uh, where the um, the computing intensive part of the CPE uh, has been migrated into the cloud. Uh, so the physical uh, CPE and the residence would be seen. Um, so the um, significant cost benefits could be gained the, for, for, for both the physical CPE, which could be quite easy and uh, easy to, to, to manage, and, to the, and there's the virtual CPE in terms of the maintenance uh, efficiency. So um, um, the key point right here is the um, a global IP address uh, which um, uh, 
conventionally allocated for the uh, CPE uh, in the residence, right here in this use it will be allocated for the virtual CP in the cloud. Therefore, the domain behind the virtual CP is actually an L the NER2 network. So the subscriber behind the physical uh, CPE uh, would access the service to virtual CP in the cloud. And all of the exchanges between uh, physical CP in the residence and the virtual CPE remain within and there to a network. So the virtual CP in the cloud it turns, it turns out to be the first node to start routing the service request as well as the service traffic with a public IP address. Next slide, please. So here's the, um, um, the three problems in this use cases for um, the uh, first one is um, uh, currently um, the uh, industry practice is the physical PCE is binded with the specific virtual CPE, which is um, um, pre-configured pre at the access gateway. Uh, so when the binding relation changes, uh, when when the access gateway want uh, to uh, uh, steer the service traffic, to, uh, ser service requested to another uh, virtual CP instance the, in another uh, cloud site, the service to, uh, dis discontinuity occurs. And um, um, the virtual CP ac actually, uh, particularly when, when, when it comes to the uh, access network, uh, uh, use cases, the virtual CP could be deployed at multiple edge computing sites use dynamic resources to status. In, in the current uh, use cases, it fails to be utilized by the near two network. And uh, uh, when it comes to the stereo traffic in, uh, uh, in access gateway, which is the near two network node, uh, the near two access gateway cannot be able to steer traffic to uh, the multiple size uh, dynamic without uh, lo location independent service identification. Next, next slide, please. So here uh, comes uh, two requirements uh, for the layer two CAS framework. Uh, number one is the service identification of the layer two protocols should be specified to computing world traffic steering, uh, particularly for the access gateway uh, or the, um, uh, the, 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 the network controller in the, uh, of the, net, uh, of the uh, access network. Uh, number two requirement is, is the computing where information may be notified to narrow two access gateways through a centralized or distributed uh, um, computing world um, products and controllers. Uh, in particular, the narrow two access gateway right here is um, always um, uh, there are three uh, capable networking nodes such as BNG and BRAS. Mm -hmm. So there are two, there are three protocols could be leveraged for computing awareness. Next slide, please. Uh, here's the thinking um, um, of how um, our thinking of how it could be uh, implemented. The first is uh, um, the access gateway could steer the traffic request from the physical CPE to the best cloud site uh, based upon the computer and wearables through the specified details. And the queuing code in user network and there are two uh, um, uh, user packets or the broadcast Mac, MAC address. Uh, could be specified as to service to, uh, identification of virtual CPE. Um, and the index both to service traffic forwarding policy and with computer awareness information. Accessibility. Um, that's more. Okay, excellent. Um, sorry, Linda, uh, in the interest of time, I'm, uh, I closed the queue. Uh, it seems to me that this document and the previous one um, could do well to try to write up the use case in a very concise way. And then maybe we can move that, those use cases into the main use case draft and that will make space for the requirements to move in as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hello. So here we go. Hi. Um, would you Hi. like me to give you? Let's let's see if I can give you control of the slides. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Hui Jian Yao from China Mobile. My presentation is about the computing and networking information awareness system architecture for CAS. 
uh, the, the, the gentle worker uh, contributor to this worker include uh, Xiu Wei uh, Wang from Regia Networks and uh, uh, Daniel Huang from ZT Corporation. Uh, uh, please next uh, next slide. Uh, 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 as we now face the requirements of emerging surveys from the convergence of network and computing, uh, as presented from Kohan. Uh, uh, CAS is proposed to the uh, aim to solve the prom problem of how the network age can steer traffic uh, to the uh, to the set uh, to the service set along the uh, uh, optimal like, network uh, path uh, to enable the computing and the networking aware traffic steering decision. Awareness of commuting service information and network is the foundation. So this document is proposed a comprehensive aware architecture, uh, who, which is introduce new components and the commute corresponding interfaces and workflows uh, and to facilitate the deployment of CAS. Uh, please, please next slides. Uh, for the um, for the uh, computing network information aware system architecture, a can chosen third component is a uh, adequately introduced to support the fine uh, green dynamic dynamic information awareness based on CAS framework. Uh, 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 especially the components includes uh, inc so four, uh, four components. One first is case uh, computing information base, uh, the short for CCIB, uh, which is, is responsible to maintain fine grained computing information, such as service connection computing uh, performance, which may be obtained from the uh, routers or from the cloud uh, traditional cloud magic platform. The second uh, component is about uh, CAS network metric information base, which, which is uh, um, responsible for to maintain uh, 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 fine green network information, such as the remain band bandwidth delay, which could be obtained from the routers. Uh, the, sec the third case pass uh, component is about the case pass calculation, uh, which is responsible for calculation of uh, optimal computing resource and the network pass based on the uh, CAS information, computing information and uh, network information from the above and the generate pass policy and deliver to the CAS increase router. Uh, the, uh, about the, the, uh, the, the other new interface is CAS source uh, sound inf inf interface, which is an intended interface based on the, the oh, oh, sorry. Mm, based on the traditional controller source found the interface between the CAS router and the CAS control uh, center. Uh, given the comprehensive this architecture, this document to uh, propose a comprehensive uh, system of the deployment location, real time resource and service states load information and requirements of computing resource and service, and to provide guarantee to the computer on where scheduling based on service requirements. Uh, please next. Please next slide. Thank you. Uh, uh, first, uh, for the uh, currently the uh, the specific network information and computing information used by the CAS still under uh, discussion. So this document uh, uh, still clarifies this information. Uh, Based on comprehensive architecture described above, in order, in order to avoid the introduction too much single loading overhead into the whole network advertisement, this document proposed to classify the content of the computer 
a computing information advertisement according to the content and uh, a frequency of information announcement and uh, uh, propose to adopt uh, different information awareness method and the information announcement protocol. As shown in this table, the computer, uh, the uh, information awareness information can be classified into capacity, uh, capacity status information and status information. For the complete information, is to is referred to relative static information with low update frequency, such as uh, deployment location, editor information, and so on. For the status information, is referred to high uh, update frequency, uh, which is include uh, real real time status um, parameters such as remain uh, bandwidth. Uh, Delay service connection, connection CPU uh, performance, and so on. Uh, please, uh, next. Uh, for the depending on the uh, uh, depending on the awareness system, uh, system, system architecture, and the uh, and the network deployment, the proposed uh, the proposed scheme. Uh, support uh, uh, typic, uh, three typical typical deployment uh, mode, including a centralized model, a hybrid uh, model, and uh, and the distributed model. Uh, for the uh, centralized model, uh, for the centralized model, the case control a uh, case control center will uh, is responsible to uh, obtain the. Uh, uh, the com computing information from uh, and uh, uh, and the network information and uh, performance service uh, scheduling according to the detailed computing information and the network information, uh, as shown in this table. Uh, uh, as shown in this figure, uh, give an example for the detailed communication from the. Cloud management, cloud management platform, and the network network information can be uh, from the uh, can can be uh, can by through by the BGP LS uh, uh, or telemetry interface from the others, and the CPE is uh, a worker uh, is uh, to calculate the com uh, com uh, to generate the service policy based on this computer information and network information to the uh, case to the case router, then the case router uh, receives the service service requirements. Then uh, steering to the traffic to the uh, to the uh, to the corresponding service set. Oh oh oh! Please please slash thanks. Uh, for the second uh, model is a hybrid model. Uh, for this model, the CAS control center obtains uh, uh, computing and network information through uh, through SBIR useful interface. The details of this information are directly transferred to CAS ingress routers. The CAS ingress routers perform performs can perform uh, 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 a great uh, resource matching and a continuous experience detection after receiving uh, service traffic requirements. Uh, this uh, this uh, this model can be uh, can 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 for the some is some high value customers and. Uh, to accurately match customer requirements, uh, uh, corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the centralized mode. Uh, please uh, next slides. Oh, the second, uh, the, the the third uh, model is a distributed mode. They for this mode, the ingress the case router will responsible for. Her for collecting commuting information and the network information and the schedule and make a schedule service decision. Um, this is 
或者是 model is a, a workflow, the detailed workflow can be seen in a case in document case framework. So, uh, please slide on. Thank you. Comments? Any question or comment or comments? Thank you very much. So thanks, uh, Hui Zhang. Um, you you used eleven of your ten minutes, so I'm I'm going to skip questions and ask people to take them uh, to the list. Uh, I will observe that we don't really want to end up with two architecture framework documents. So I'd be looking for you to work with the uh, authors of the uh, other document to try to understand. Uh, what the differences are and uh, where you can add information and where you've got points that need to be debated. Uh, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now we move on to the bit that's metrics. A long walk of shame. Song Peng, yeah, hi, off you go. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. I, I'm Zhong Fangdu from China Mobile. Uh, and uh, I will introduce the, the draft about uh, computing modeling description. Uh, this is a version one uh, draft, and uh, we will introduce the modifications and uh, uh, an in-stream discussion about the metric. And oh, I can control. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, Miteko seems to have um, got itself uh, uh, really messed up, so I have to control everything. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, this is the, the outline of the uh, slides, and uh, we will introduce the interim discussion first, and uh, then the modifications. Next, please. Uh, this is about the, uh, the small group had a, a, a call uh, to discuss metrics for for case. Uh, next, please, and. Uh, uh, th this is all. This was organized by the uh, chairs, and uh, we got some uh, summary summarize uh, summaries. Uh, I, the first one is that uh, uh, it is important that the metric scheme uh, used uh, should be flexible and uh, extensible to support future requirements. And uh, the second uh, is about uh, for the simplicity. And uh, the initial metrics uh, specification should cover only those metrics. We think that uh, uh, we need to solve the immediate problems. And uh, on the call, uh, we we we, uh, we have agreed that uh, uh, one requirement should be the delay uh, uh, that uh, uh, includes the network pro propagate time and. Uh, uh, pro processing time, and and uh, uh, the fourth one is about that we we perhaps have uh, other uh, possible metrics, and uh, uh, they will be discussed and uh, uh, talked, and uh, if uh, it, it thinks to be useful. Next, please, please. And uh, we will introduce the modifications of this uh, version version one. Uh, draft. Uh, we mainly uh, modify the uh, section five, uh, computing resource modeling, and uh, with the intent to start with uh, simple metrics firstly. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a comparison, and uh, we we had some concerns to the uh, section five. Uh, next, please. And. Uh, 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 this uh, here we, uh, I int we introduce some requirement of metrics using CAS, uh, we because we think that uh, uh, the advertisement uh, propagation 
and the usage of the metric in CAS are all related. So we recall the scenario of CAS firstly. Uh, in the in the scenario, uh, we have uh, several uh, places. Uh, for example, this uh, MEC one, MEC two, and MEC three. They all uh, can support the service side service one, and uh, but with different metrics. Uh, for example, metric one, metric two, and metric three. And uh, the steps uh, we 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 it includes four steps in the step one. Uh, the service point, uh, the the uh, uh, for example, this MEC uh, can collect some uh, specific computing information, and uh, we think that we only need to collect the necessary compute, computing information. And uh, the service point uh, will send uh, the computing information into the network, and uh, perhaps it will update it on demand or Periodically, uh, in, uh, in the step three, the decision point, for example, in the, this device one, we will receive this computing information and then make the decision, uh, so that uh, the route for the service ID uh, on the ingress is uh, established or updated. Uh, in the step two, step four, uh, the traffic for the service ID will reach this ingress node and. Uh, be identified and steered according to the policy in the step three. And next page, please. Uh, here is some requirement. Uh, uh, the first is about uh, we, we think that uh, the, the optimization objects or the policy in the decision points may be various. For example, uh, we, we it may be the lowest latency latency or the sum of the network delay and the computing delay, or uh, the uh, optimization objective is uh, an overall a better load balance result. Uh, here we will prefer the service points that could support uh, more clients. And uh, second about uh, perhaps uh, uh, the, uh, the update frequency or the computing metrics may be various. Uh, and uh, so uh, the notification ways or the computing metric may be various. Uh, and the last one is we think that uh, metric monitoring process should be supported uh, if uh, multiple service instances are behind the, behind the same uh, egress. Next, please. And uh, we also get some design principles here can be considered. Uh, the first one is about, uh, we can start with simple cases. And uh, the, uh, the, some DM principle can be considered here is the first one is uh, the computing metrics in class, uh, firstly should be few and simple so that we can avoid exposing too much information of the service point. And the second, uh, we think that the computing metrics in CAS should be involved for the future extensions. And the third is that the computing metrics in the CAS should be vendor independent and OS dependent. Uh, next, please. Um, we also uh, add this uh, uh, some contents about uh, the con consideration of using uh, metrics in CAS. We also claim that we can start with simple cases and we can modify it if we think some metrics are necessary. Uh, the case one is about uh, the optimization object of the uh, traffic steering is the minimal the total delay for the client. Uh, in this case, the decision point uh, or the ingress can collect the network delay and uh, computing delay that make a decision about the optimal service points. And the computing delay can be generated by the server and uh, all the uh, service instant, which has the meaning of uh, the estimate of the duration of my processing of the request. Uh, the, in the second case, uh, uh, we have another metric that can be considered is uh, service capability. Uh, for, for example, one server can support 100 sessions and another can support uh, 
10,000 sessions uh, in this time we will prefer uh, more clients to connect to the second one and also for some other optimization objectives we can also consider other metrics uh, even metrics about uh, uh, energy consumptions I mentioned in other draft next please uh, this is about the next step. Uh, we will call for comments and uh, refine the draft. Also, we can uh, modify the draft according to other related uh, documents, for example, the framework draft. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, any comments? So thank you. What I'm going to do is leave the queue open, but move through the remaining two presentations to give everybody, give them the chance to speak. And if we've got time left at the end, we'll service the queue. Um, so uh, next up is Linda, I think. Nah. Okay. Okay. So um, thanks for the previous slides. Give the framework and the requirement for the matrix for cats. And here I'm going to give um, some detailed matrix which is desired for the 5G edge computing uh, environment. So it could be a use case, it's a use case driven matrix. Next slide, please. So a little bit of background, right? So um, in the 5G domain, it is very important. One of the key feature of the 5G is delivering ultra low latency services. So ultra low latency services, um, there is a network delay. There's also service delay. So there's two combined, right? Um, and um, uh, so the background is to be able to find the combined uh, latest delay for those particular services. And the very important thing, those services, ultra low service, um, is not for every, everything. Like a, a UE can, can have one service which require low latency, but majority of services initiated from, from the UE doesn't. So those are the premium service, are the registered services, the application controller do have the information on what service ID require a low latency service. Next one. So um, in this environment, I'll keep it simple. Um, uh, there are three major um, matrix which are necessary to be able to be integrated with network delay to, reach, to achieve the ultra low latency. One is we call service delay prediction. So it is very, very, very difficult to, to, um, to say for this particular service, how much delay it will be from different um, edge centers. This is under the assumption that one service has multiple instances in multiple edge uh, data centers. And uh, um, so uh, one thing you can base on is how much capacity you have, how much resource you have. But just having the resource index is not accurate. Um, you cannot act actually calculate the delay. Um, so we call it delay prediction. So this delay prediction can be a configured value based on the service ID. Like particular service have certain kind of characteristics. Their service delay could be um, X, Y, Z at um, edge data center one. And this um, same service could have another value at um, edge data center two. So that can be a configured value. Um, it could be also measured based on the remaining uh, capacity left. And another thing is uh, when the application service logic is not visible to the, the operator, like 5G operator. Um, so you cannot really predict the service delay based on those values. Um, you can also use historic data to um, predict how much service delay it is. So based on the principle that, hey, this particular ad data center, historically is this amount of traffic to this service ID. And uh, at this particular hour, suddenly the traffic demand goes up like 200%. It could be driven by a particular convention happening at this particular site attract lots of UE come to this particular site, anchor to the cell tower, causing huge um, increase of service demand. So with that, you can predict that at this site, um, 
we can divert some of traffic to other side. So that's kind of, uh, we're using the uh, IP layer matrix to uh, compare with historic data to predict potential service delay at certain site. So that's the category under service delay pr uh, prediction. Um, another matrix is we call the preference uh, index. So preference index is really service to service independent. So uh, service A could be require high intensity computation. So at this particular site, maybe they have more CPU power. So the preference on this site on site A could be higher. Another service ID could require high uh, bisectional um, um, bandwidth for microservices. So for a particular site with um, high um, throughput among the servers, um, they could have higher uh, preference. And some other service ID could be uh, like require large storage then at a particular site with huge amount of storage um, could have higher preference. So um, there's a preference index. So preference index is also um, can be used for sticky service, meaning when a UE roam from cell tower one to another cell tower, anchor to different uh, user plan function, will come into the network from different ingress point. And the preference ID, um, ID can be used to steer the traffic into the previous uh, service um, sites. Um, so that's the second one. The third one is um, we call site availability index, uh, meaning that at a particular site, you could have a whole shelf just completely go dark. Uh, you lost power, uh, something happened, network fiber cut, uh, something happened causing a physical um, location apart to be complete out. Um, in the BGP, like if say if you have um, an egress node support BGP, um, normally you have to send many um, uh, route withdrawal message to the ingress nodes to indicate all the services being impacted. Site availability index is basically one value to tell the, all the ingress nodes, all the routes associated with this particular site ID um, are down so that ingress node can um, process all the routes associated with the site ID, switch them into a different place. Uh, so those are the three um, uh, service uh, metrics, we call metadata, um, we propose for the edge uh, computing environment. Next. Linda, you've used seven and a half of your 10 minutes. Oh, okay, I will hurry up. So, um, this is just an exemplary algorithm to uh, show how do we integrate network delay with the service delay to come up with one single unit uh, number value which BGP can use to select the path. Next slide. Um, okay, so for the this is for the BGP distribution. So BGP has this um, route constraint um, distribution, meaning that you only distribute the traffic into the uh, router who are interested. So here we're using a route ID, um, a service ID as a route target to, to limit the distribution of the, um, the BGP update. Um, so this um, have more detailed information in the in IDR document. We have a detailed mechanism on how to achieve those re uh, restricted distribution. Thank you. Um, okay, so here's another thing about um, in the BGP domain, um, one egress router um, not only behave as the um, egress router to those edge services, they could be the next hub for many other services like going through the egress to the internet. So that um, this is just one reason that we're using the site index instead of route withdrawal or changing the next hop weight because in the BGP, you can change the weight for the next hop. Um, by changing the next hop uh, weight, you can impact a great number of routes, which may not be the um, edge services. That's it. Um, okay, we can skip that. Um, so um, here is just the use case derived uh, matrix and we're looking for more feedbacks. Thank you.
Okay, thanks. We'll continue to keep the queue open, but save you until after the last presentation. Uh, I want to apologize from the chairs um, for not having um, trimmed those slides because uh, there was some solution protocol work in there and that's clearly not in scope. What we're trying to get out of that is the, the metrics that we need to, to discuss. So last up is uh, Jing, I think. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, go ahead. Tell me when you want a new slide. OK, thanks. Hello, everyone. This is Jing Wang from China Mobile. This was my first presentation at uh, ITF. OK, I'm here on behalf of authors to report the draft about green challenges in cats. Uh, uh, why considering green in cats? As we all know, reducing carbon footprint to net zero is one of mankind's grand challenges. With the continuous uh, development and the progress of the internet, uh, a large uh, amount of computing resources is required to complete data processing, which would uh, produce a lot of energy consumption. Computing work traffic stream is about the uh, process of selecting service instance for directing traffic to the uh, based on observed metrics for both computing and networking. Uh, so green in cash is worth exploring. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, there, uh, there are three green challenges in cash. Uh, the first challenge is uh, computing resource energy consumption uh, monitoring. Uh, computing resource data uh, is considered in cash, so it's necessary to uh, research the uh, modeling of computing resource energy consumption in order to save energy. The energy consumption of equipment uh, is different with the low status. For example, the energy efficiency of equipment is different when it's not loaded or at full load. Uh, therefore, it's also a change to consider which factors be consider, uh, considered when modeling the energy consumption of computing resources. Next slide, please. OK. Uh, the second challenge is joint uh, optimization of computing and network. On the one hand, the uh, magnitude of computing energy consumption may be different from the uh, magnitude of network energy consumption. And uh, how to read the ratio of network and the computing status uh, becomes a challenge uh, when performing joint optimization. On the other hand, uh, the introduction of energy and consumption may be a complex, uh, accompanied by a compromise between user service experience and uh, how to uh, save energy while ensuring user service in, uh, experience is also a change when carrying out joint optimization. Next slide, please. Okay, the third change is energy consumption of other equipment. Uh, you know, uh, the computing resources may be in the data center, edge computing nodes, or others. In order to ensure the normal op uh, operation of network and computing equipment, uh, the source of energy consumption is not only the equipment itself, but also some other equipment, such as core input. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, recently the document uh, uh, related uh, green metrics uh, gave some green network, networking metrics for network in uh, instrumentation to optim uh, uh, optimize the energy efficiency, uh, efficiency of the network. Uh, 
uh, as the damage or equipment level, the author considers three factors. Uh, the first are uh, energy consumption metrics. Some of these metrics could be provi uh, provided by the data sheet uh, that comes with the device or could be measured simply in a lab, such as power consumption when idle, power consumption when fully loaded, power consumption at various loads, and so on. Uh, the others are not fixed and need to be accounted according to the actual operation of the network equipment, such as current power consumption per kilobyte or uh, kilobytes, uh, current power consumption per packet. Power drawn since system started for the past minute and so on. At the flow level, these metrics are related to flows such as uh, an, uh, amortized energy consumed over the duration of the flow and uh, incremental energy conser uh, consumed over the duration of the flow. At the path level, these metrics can evaluate the energy consumption of path and uh, optimize uh, these paths uh, so that uh, the overall footprint is minimized. The author gave some candidate metrics, such as energy rating of a path, uh, current power consumption uh, across a path, and uh, incremental power for a packet over a path. Yeah. At the net network level, these metrics can ref reflect the energy usage of the entire network. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we will consider how to use green metrics in CAS. Uh, uh, as we all know, the CAS charter doesn't include uh, green, re uh, green related parts. So this draft is a simple attempt yeah, uh, so welcome more people who are interested in this topic. Thanks. Brilliant, thank you, Jing, and well done in keeping to the time. Um, I'm gonna make three points from the chair and then we might manage uh, questions from the floor. Firstly, um, this green stuff is potentially in scope. I think we asked the AD last time round, um, but, we need to be aware that it's it's really complicated and and a big deal uh and so we should try to run it in parallel with the other metric stuff and not slow down the the, the basic metrics work um on metrics i'm going to go to alto later today to introduce cats to them and to mention the fact that they're probably interested in metrics to do with compute uh, and um, if we perceive an overlap, we should sit down and have an inter a joint interim meeting to try to, to beat out what the, the real core metrics are. Um, and my third point is to remind presenters next time round, when you've got a time slot, that slot includes any questions you want to handle. So you can use your time or you can share it with the questioners. And now we've got precisely two minutes. Um, if Dirk, you still want to ask a question? Um, yes, yes, I do. Uh, I, I think your second item is why can more people are interested in the topic on uh, if that meant metrics. Um, I'm up for it because my question was mainly about metrics. Um, I put this into the chat as well. I see the I, I see the interest in delay, but I'm also a little bit worried that they're getting bogged down a little bit too much into one. And I would really encourage people to think, uh, even in an ARVR scenario, wanting to send something to an instance that has a GPU has only reactively to do with uh, delay. And I do not want to wait until my ARVR gets bad in delay in order to make a decision otherwise. So capabilities are really, really important. And I dug back into uh, CCPP in the W3C, which is a, 
an RDF base that may be overkill, but it's a very interesting framework to allow modeling of compute capabilities that maybe the authors of the various drafts should take a look at. It allows you to encode capabilities, including where we could probably uh, put stuff like green metrics in. Um, a wide scope for reusage, really. Thank you. Good, thanks. Luis, I hope you can be quick because Julian keeps getting bumped off queues and I'd like him to have sure, a go. Yeah, I, I will be quick. Just a comment to Linda's presentation. Linda was commenting about the idea of uh, configuring statically the delay as a potential metric. Obviously, that this could be problematic because the delay is varying along the time. So probably, I mean, at the end, some, having uh, uh, an static value will be a kind of precedence, like the other ones that cite availability of preference or so. So I would recommend not to go to static delays because it's, it's changing from the idle status of the network up to the uh, peak status of the network. So it's varying along the time. Yeah, Julian, we don't have Nokia. Uh, so I wish we had more time for discussion. It appears that it's not the case. Uh, one thing that I would like to stress here is that I've noted that we see requirements popping out from different use cases here. I wish we had much better tracking from the use cases to the requirements. Today, we have requirements that go in different directions. It's very difficult to understand where these requirements are coming from. Sometimes you get the feeling that they come from nowhere. And I've made observations about why I thought that the use cases were somewhat high level. Uh, that makes it very difficult to create corresponding requirements. Uh, and today, the requirements we have, some of them stand pretty much in the air. So if that could be improved in every of the documents that propose requirement, that would be uh, really very profitable, I guess. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, we are technically out of time. Uh, Pong, do you need uh, to say anything to wrap up? Yes. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all the presenters and the contributors. I just to have some overall comments since we don't have so, uh, so much time. Uh, we can see some new draft has both uh, new requirements, use case, metrics, and frameworks. So we hope that the authors of the draft could work together to see if there are anything missed or, or uh, anything to be contributed to this WG. And uh, yes, that's my comments. Brilliant. Thank you all. Uh, see you on the mailing list. Hello. So if there is a